This is the do-it-yourself guide to business buying. Today, we're talking about discovery. Welcome, business buyers. What is our goal with this video, discovery? Well, we need a detailed understanding of the target business we want to buy, so we need answers to our questions. I would say there are five ways to get those answers if it's a broker deal, four ways if it's direct approach. What are those five ways? Well, it starts with a SIM, a confidential information memorandum, we discussed it and described it in our video on requesting financials. We're also going to get financial documents, statements, other information from the seller. And of course, we're going to have seller broker discussions. That's mostly what this video is about. There's publicly available information we can access. And we are going to be giving the seller a written due diligence questionnaire as well. Of those five, I would say discovery tools are mostly the first four. The fifth one, written due diligence questionnaire. There's some discovery. It's mostly for verifying the information we've been given. So of those five ways... The one we're going to focus on today is the seller broker discussions. That's our focus in this video. If this were a direct approach deal, I think our five ways drops down to four ways because we're not going to get a SIM unless a broker is involved. We would only have four ways to get information if it was a direct approach deal. You need to make a mental note of that. It does make discovery a lot more time consuming and a lot more challenging. If you think about it, you're going to have to dig for information that would normally be included and presented to you in a SIM. And that's why having a discovery master list can be so helpful. I've got a huge list. It's on the website. That's where you can access it. A lot of these questions aren't pertinent to every deal. But if we try to put together an exhaustive list that we can pick and choose from deal to deal, it's going to save a lot of time. And it's going to make sure that we get the information we need. Now, before getting into our discovery 20 questions list, that's the one we're doing in this video, I do want to address a couple of issues. The first issue is investing time in discovery. If this turquoise bar represents everything there is to know and understand about a target business, and the maroon bar represents what we learn about this business, well, we're going to start knowing very little. And as we progress through different milestones in the deal, of course, we're learning more and more about the business. And even when we close, we haven't actually learned everything there is to know. But what point am I making? Knowledge is thin at the start, and it grows over time as we progress through the deal. You really can't collect full information on every deal in the funnel. That would be a colossal waste of time and impossible to do. There's just too many deals in our funnel. We're not going to do full discovery on every single one of them. We have to be prudent in how we invest our time. In reality, we screen deals, they get stopped, the deal gets screened out. Next deal, yeah, it gets screened out again. Next deal, gets screened out. Most deals that enter the funnel do get screened out. So the time spent on discovery with those deals has no real payoff, which is why we've got to use our time and effort so wisely and prudently. Full discovery only happens on deals that continue to progress. We really need to separate discovery and screening. Screening is important. I mean, we have four videos on screening deals. We talk a lot about it. So it is important, but this video is about discovery. It's about the questions that we need to get answered to have the understanding we need on a business. I think of it this way. If I'm getting a green light on a deal and I don't get screened out and it makes it to the finish line for deals with a continual green light, those are the ones we do full discovery. And what does that look like? I have a discovery master list that's broken into the basics and the fine points. The basics are 20 questions. It's how everything fits together. It's a top-down understanding of the business. The fine points are when we really dig into it. There's 150 plus questions. I don't know what the current total on that is, but that's where we drill down on each element. It's a bottom-up understanding. We're getting serious about really understanding the business. It includes due diligence questions, etc. The starter questions, the 20 questions, is what we're covering in this video. The full treatment, the full master list, we're going to cover on the do-it-yourself site. Okay, let's get into it. The basics, 20 questions getting started on discovery. I am just going to plow through them. Number one, we need to know the business name and location. What is the legal name of the business or businesses if there's more than one? And do they use any doing business as names or DBAs? That's quite common in e-commerce, for example, where they will have multiple DBAs. So you have to ask the question and figure out whether this is the case in your target business. And we want to know where the business is located, where are the physical premises. That can matter when it comes to hiring and other issues, so let's get clear on that. Number two, the business history. When was the business founded and by whom? It matters. Did the current owner acquire or found this business? Why does it matter? Well, for example, one thing is legacy. If we have an owner who founded the business or maybe a father or grandfather even founded that business, then legacy tends to be a lot more important to those kinds of people. So we need to know if the business was acquired and when and by whom. If the current owner is the third or fourth person to own this business and they've owned it for three years, 
it's really unlikely that legacy is going to be important to that individual. If this is something that's been in the family for multiple generations, the exact opposite is true. Legacy then becomes very important to many of them. What's the business structure? Hey, how many businesses are for sale? Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? And what is the ownership breakdown of each entity? Sometimes it's a parent sub relationship. One business owns another business. Sometimes two businesses can be sister businesses, which means they are independently owned, but the same ownership group. And sometimes it's even more complicated where there's slight differences in the ownership group. We need to get a good read on that. What's the legal structure of each entity? Is it an LLC? Is it a C Corp, et cetera? Business activity. We need to know what role does this business play in the supply chain? Is this business a manufacturer? Are they an OEM? Maybe a distributor, a value-added reseller? Are they a retailer? Do they offer a service? You need to ask that question and you need to make sure it's clear in your mind. If they're involved in more than one, what is the percentage of each when it comes to revenue? Next is the trading area of the business. What kind of geo market does the business serve? Is this a local business? Is it regional? Is it national? Is it international? And of course, we want to pay attention to percentages. Just because somebody sells 2% of their revenue to international clients doesn't make it an international business. And have there been any recent changes, right? Have they been expanding in new areas? We want to know that. Products and services. What products or services does the business sell? We want a revenue breakdown of the top five most popular items and a profit breakdown of the top five most popular items as well. It's not unusual for a small percentage of the products to generate a large percentage of the profit. We wanna know if that's the case in this target business. Number seven, the owner's business activity. Are the owners active in the business? If so, what role? Do they have a sales role? Is it operations? Is it financial? Is it customer facing? Maybe it's technical. This is important. How many days a week are they at the business? And I will say, you can sometimes not get a completely accurate picture from what the owner tells you. They do sometimes tend to downplay how active they are in the business for obvious reasons. So doing a little bit of additional checking on that makes sense. Number eight, owner's compensation. Are the owners compensated with salaries that are expensed or are they compensated through a distribution of profit? This makes a big difference. For example, in the UK, you'll see a charge on the income statement for the general manager is usually quite small. And most of their compensation comes from below the line after tax profit. And so you'll get a different sort of viewpoint of what the profit of a business is if it does or doesn't include what the owner is paid in expenses. So we always need to check owner compensation. Is the owner's compensation at market rates? Is it an expense that is expensed against uh, revenue when we calculate income? These are the things that we're trying to figure out. Next, motivation for selling. Hey, why are the owners selling this business? What are they going to do next? What are they going to use the money for? And is the desire to sell shared by all of the shareholders? Understanding motivation, really important. And finally, we want some information on owner personal guarantees. Are the owners in a situation where they personally guaranteed the financial debt of the business? If so, what is the total amount of their personal guarantee? And when was the personal guarantee first put in place? It's not completely unheard of that some sellers are motivated by this issue. They don't feel comfortable with the personal guarantee that they have on the financial debt of this business. And so to get themselves out from underneath that, they want to sell the business. So we want to have a better read on exactly how personal guarantees work for this particular target business. Business headcount. What is the headcount at the business? How many people work full-time? How many part-time? And how many outside contractors do they use? Let's make sure we understand headcount. Out of that, who are the key employees? What are their roles? Do they know the owners are selling? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. If they do know, are they likely to stay under new ownership? So we need to know who are the key people in this business, and then you have to handicap your chances of being able to keep them around, a really important part of buying a business. Next, we want to take a look at the business premises. Do they lease or own the business premises? If they lease, is the lease from a related party, maybe from a business that they control that owns that property? We really want to know, do they pay market rent? Because businesses that don't pay market rent usually have inflated earnings, which of course inflates the value of the business. So we want to make sure that when we're normalizing income, that we are double checking the rent number to make sure that it is a market rent. What about customer count? How many total customers have been served in this business? Usually you can get an answer to that question. And then you want to know how many have actively purchased within the last 12 months. And also how many new customers are added each year. Knowing the number of customers and customer concentration and how frequently customers are added is important base knowledge we need to know about our target business. Demand generation. How do they generate demand and or generate sales leads? 
Is it inbound through marketing? Is it outbound through active lead generation? Maybe a lot of the business comes from word of mouth. Make sure you get some answers to those questions, right? It's important. Word of mouth businesses can be fantastic, but there are a lot of challenges associated with them as well. So make sure you include this question. Sales activity. How many salespeople do they directly employ? Do they have a third-party business that distributes their product? In terms of the percentage of revenue, how does it break down when we take a look at new versus repeat customers? We need a clear picture of the sales mix of any target business. Recurring revenue, really important these days. What percentage of revenue, if any, recurs under contract? We're not just talking about repeat business here. We're talking about contractually committed recurring revenue. And whether it recurs monthly or yearly, we'd like to know that as well. And how do the contracts renew? Do they auto renew? Does it require someone to sign up all over again? You know, those are some of the things that are important to know. Does it operate in a regulated industry? Is there a professional of record that's required? For example, a structural engineering firm needs a professional of record to sign off on the projects. Some businesses need a license. Uh, sometimes there are certifications of value that companies have, like ISO 9001, and, and even though it's not a matter of it being regulated, it could be that certain contracts that that business hold have as a requirement that the vendor maintains an ISO 9001 qualification. I have certainly seen that. So take a look at this idea of whether the industry is regulated or not. In terms of suppliers, who are the main suppliers of the business? Where are they located? Has this business experienced any supply chain issues? Many businesses do these days. So you need to actually take a look at the supply chain and see if it's vulnerable or not. And then finally, litigation or audit. Has this business ever been sued? Does it anticipate litigation based on recent events? Are they under tax audit? Have they recently been audited? So there's five ways to get answers. I'd say use them all as part of your discovery. The 20 basic questions are just framework. They're a baseline. You can, of course, customize and tailor them to fit your precise needs. And do check out the discovery master list. It's on the website. Then you'll get the full list of questions on the fine points. Those questions are always being added to. So I never really know exactly what the number of questions are there, but it gives you a starting point for every single deal in terms of potential questions that you want to ask and potential information that you want to get as part of discovery. So let's get after it. This is the do-it-yourself guide to business buying. Today, we've been talking about discovery because we like to learn and grow as we go. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.